Blog Talk Radio. You are now viewing Prophet H. Walker and True Light Pentecost Church. Those they are viewing and seeking after righteousness, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now, Paul is a very complex writer. He may say something that you might uh, wrongly divide or you may not have a proper interpretation and this would conflict with something that he's taught over here but Paul is not a conflicting teacher what we have to understand everybody's not God never had the one teacher at one dispensation of time Amen. to teach one people teach to be a part of one church. Though we may be scattered by a division of latitude, yes. if you will, nevertheless, we still are one body in Christ. Amen. And if we're one body in Christ, we've got to speak the same thing. Yes. Now, uh, if you take notice in uh, 1 Timothy 6, chapter, verse 1, I want to set up something here. Lord, help me. I'm going to try to work on the board tonight and to say to the YouTube viewers, very, very important teaching. If you pay attention and hear what thus saith the Lord, it will bless you in your Christian walk in this evil and hateful time where the Word of God is being blasphemed as never before. Uh, right from verse 1. Let as many servants as are under the yoke help their own masters. Now the yoke means the God is using this as a semblance to those who have disciplined themselves to be called Christian, if you will. Uh -huh. Help their own masters worthy of all honor. Teachers worthy of all honor. That the name of God and his doctrine be not blasphemed. For the purpose of not blaspheming the word of God. In Romans, the 14th chapter, I thank the Lord for someone giving me a call today. And they were concerned about uh, this passage. Uh, church, and, and hear me close. Amen. As long as you use line upon line and precept on precept, 
And as long as you always have not told you in times past, you must keep the foundation. You have to keep the foundation intact. The foundation means the Bible in a context of establishing a rule. When the rule is established, that is the foundation, and there are foundational scriptures that are very important. Amen. And we're going to deal with some of those foundations tonight. And Romans the 14th chapter. Amen. And pick right up in verse 1. Him that is weak in the faith receive you, but not to doubt for this disputation. Yes. For one believeth that he may eat all things, another who is weak eateth herbs. Right. Let not him that eateth despise him that eateth not. And let not him which eateth not judge him that eateth. Now, if you recall, Jesus gave a teaching over in Matthew, and he said, I speak in parables yes. so that them that do not believe will not understand. Now, Paul is a very complex writer. Yeah. He may say something that you might uh, wrongly divide, or you may not have a proper interpretation, and this would conflict with something that he's taught over here. But Paul is not a conflicting teacher. Amen. What we have to understand, everybody's not able to rightly divide the word of truth. Now, in the three verses we just read, uh, again, jump in right at verse 3. Let not him that eateth despise him that eateth not, and let not him which eateth not judge him that eateth, for God hath received him. All right, verse, well, verse 1, show your connection here, pay close attention. Him that is weak in the faith, weak in the faith, baby say, Receive you, but not to doubtful disputations. There's a key phrase here. Amen. Doubtful uh, disputations. Right, right, In right. other words, you receive a weak saint yeah. who may make mistakes, mm -hmm. but you don't disfellowship that person. Mm -hmm. You don't put them out to church unless they are a part of doubtful disputations. Right, right. That means those who actively oppose right. correct teaching. Amen. It's all right. Well, I'm not going to say it's all right, but it can be accepted for a baby saint to make a mistake. Amen. But as long as that baby saint accepts guidance and correction and repents of that mistake, Amen. that baby saint is not to be disfellowshipped. Amen. Now, this is totally different uh, in 2 Thessalonians 6 and 3. Amen. I told you Paul is a very complex teacher. If you take Paul's, some of Paul's teaching, you will misinterpret what Paul is trying to say. I'm trying to speak over YouTube to those who have a mind truly to be saved. And I've said before, this is why God always had one teacher. Uh-huh. Now we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now this is a commandment from God. That ye withdraw yourselves from every brother that walketh disorderly and not after the, the tradition which he received of us. Now withdraw means you separate yourself. Amen. Leave them alone. Put them out to church. Yes. You don't have nothing to do with them. Because they have disobeyed the instructions the apostles have given. Well, read that again. Verse now, 3. Now we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye withdraw yourself. Withdraw from yourself. From every brother that walketh disorderly. That means any brother who's not following the same rule. Right. So you see again the importance of foundational scripture. Now, uh, to show you. The complex teaching here, someone would go, go back to Romans 14 chapter, someone would take verses 2, for one believer that he may eat all things, another who is weak eateth herbs, let him that eateth despise him, uh, despise him that eateth not, let him which eateth not judge him, now what Paul is saying, that, that the church does not judge the weak or baby saint, Amen. God will make that judgment. Right, right. But that does not mean that you go along with someone, you, you give an order not to smoke, not drink liquor. Amen. If somebody in the church drinking and, 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 and smoking. Amen. So you have to understand the difference. Right, right. Yes, you judge that person Amen. and you must make a, a set rule against that person who's disobedient, disorderly. Yeah. Again, if you take the, uh, the latter part of verse 1 again, him that is weak in the faith, receive ye, but not in doubtful disputation. Right. You don't receive him if he's conflicting with the order or the rule of the church 
And it's not repenting. It's not being able to be corrected. Amen. So it's again, it's any baby saint who can be weak. All baby saints are weak. So this is what Paul is dealing with. He's dealing with a weak uh, brother or sister in the church. You don't put them out. You have to wait until they grow. I believe one pastor said, you can't give a baby uh, meat to drink. Amen. Amen. Because uh, you can't take the little infant child and just just give him a uh, uh, fried chicken. and amen. amen. You have to give him the formula and dilute it to such a way that he can receive the nourishment but they ain't going to choke him. Amen. So you have to understand how Paul is instructing the church. Now let's go to foundational scriptures that Paul has taught. Give me uh, 2 Timothy. 1 Timothy, uh, is that chapter 2? Uh, 2 and 19. 2 Timothy 2 and 19. Nevertheless, the foundation of God stand is sure, having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his, and let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Now, let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from a sinful life. Now, this is what's called a foundational scripture. Now, let's connect this with Deuteronomy 30. I think we want to go to verse 15. Amen. We're going to use line upon line and precept on precept. Here a little, there a little. As long as you hold the foundational scriptures intact, you can never be misguided and you can never be uh, slick talk by a clever hypocrite preacher who don't know what he's talking about. There's no such thing as a person living a sinful life, he's still saved. Amen. Don't never believe that. Don't never get tricked into that. You are held accountable to your actions after you've been converted. Amen. But you're not held in the same accountability as someone who's been in holiness for 15 years, someone who's been in holiness for 15 days. Amen. You have to understand there is a growth process. Yeah. And that growth process is to be nurtured. But you nurture it by the cleansing of what? The word. the word. The word of God cleanses a person or strengthens a person so that that person is able to grow. Hallelujah. Paul said, I press toward the mark of the high calling. In other words, I'm going forward. I'm never going back. I may not be going as fast as you, but I'm still going forward. As long as I'm not contesting with the truth of the word of God. Amen. I said, uh, where did I say go? Deuteronomy 30 and 15. Yes. See, I have set before thee this day life and good and death and evil. A foundational rule is good and evil. All the Bible, that's verse 15, all the Bible is based on good and evil, or right and wrong. This is why the prophet Ezekiel wrote, there must be a difference between what? Clean and unclean between holy and profane. This is where they erred in the false churches today. They don't make a difference between clean and unclean. They say everybody's the same. It don't make no difference. God died at Calvary. He washed away your sins. He did. But he did not wash away your sins for you to continue a life of sin. Now let's back into Romans 6 chapter. I said Paul is a complex writer. Now watch Romans the 6th chapter. If you think he means in, in the 14th chapter of the book of Romans that uh, people who keep on sinning, you treat them just like everybody else because God, he, you know, you ain't supposed to judge. That, uh, what does it say go? Romans chapter 6. Now hold your place there and get me 1 Timothy 5 and 20. Now, let, let's watch this and, and show St. Paul right now. Amen. Amen. First Timothy 5 and 20. Then we go back into uh, Romans 6. Them that sin, rebuke before all that others are. Them that Amen. sin, Amen. correct before Amen. all for a reason. Uh huh. So, that, all, so that, all, that others also may fear. That others might fear. That's right. So, you in the church, you have a room. The foundation scriptures have to be held in effect because what we're dealing with is the principles of good and evil yes. or right and wrong. So if you are afraid to correct someone who's constantly uh, creating a disturbance in the church 
and won't accept guidance, you put that person out. Amen. Now, is that judging? You can call it judging, or you can call it whatever you want, or this fellowship, call it whatever you want. Amen. But the fact of the matter is, them that sin rebuke before all that others may fear. Yes, Lord. Amen. Now, that's the same Paul writing, but we're in Romans, the 14th chapter, not to, not to judge if you want to take it in that context. But again, he's trying to show the difference that there has to be, hear me close now, there's got to be a balance between any uh, type of uh, recognition of someone who's in the household of faith. There has to be a balance or a perfect understanding between who is weak, who's a baby, and who is strong in the faith. Everybody's not strong in the same dimension. Everybody don't have the same amount of faith. But faith as a grain of a mustard seed does not stay as a grain of a mustard seed. It has to grow. But it can't grow unless it's taught. You have to water the the the, 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 the fledgling uh, baby saint. You got to water it, nurture it, until it reaches a level where it can stand up on its own feet. Amen. So this has to be taken into a consideration, and this is why I say everybody is not can't teach this. Amen. Everybody has no business teaching the Bible. If a person teaches the Bible and does teach not, does not teach it in a right application, they do far more harm than the devil is doing in actuality, because everybody can know the devil, but sometimes a person don't know a clever hypocrite preacher. Amen. If you think I'm lying, turn on your TV some Sunday and just look at him in droves. Praise the Lord. So here I'm trying to say, brothers and sisters, even though Paul is a complex writer, if you've got a teacher who can teach you the truth, it's nothing complex or nothing difficult except in the humility to accept correction and guidance. I said go to Romans 6 chapter. All right, start right at verse 1. What, sh what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Sin is a departure from the righteousness of God. Amen. Sin is identified only by good and evil. Amen. Did y'all know that? Yeah. That's the only way you can point out sin. Someone who sins has disobeyed the instruction of God, therefore he is doing evil or he is doing wrong. Amen. Now God said, I have said before you this day, good and evil, blessings and cursings, yeah. life and death. Yes. Choose. It's always an individual choice. When God put Adam and Eve in the garden paradise and told them not to partake of the tree in the midst of the garden, they had to make a choice. Amen. <laughs> he didn't program them not to sin because then there would be no true worship. Right. True worship or true respect or true love for God has to come from the individual making a commitment. I love Jesus. Amen. Well, if you love me, can you prove it? Amen. By a lifestyle, but Lord, I don't know how to live, so I'll give you some rules. Right. And in the rules, I'm going to set your foundation. Amen. And the foundation is good and evil. So God instructs us how to live right and how not to live. In other words, if, if I do what God has instructed for me to do, then everything is fine. But the adversary or the temptation that is in the world is always going to be there because it's in your earthly body. Well, I'm in my earthly body. How do I get the victory? You get the victory through the Holy Ghost. Amen. The Holy Ghost comes to lead and guide and all truth. The Holy Ghost will convict you, but the Holy Ghost will not make you live right. Amen. Holy Ghost will make you live holy, Amen. but it'll tug on you. It'll always be there to give you a warning, to give you uh, an, an, an inference that you, maybe you ought not to go to that bar. Amen. Amen. You know, you, you, you cleanse, you, you, you don't drink no more, you don't go to that, that place no more. Lord. Well, I'll just go and, and nothing wrong with me just going to have one or two drinks. When you become a partaker of evil deeds, that makes you an evil or sinful person. That's right. Amen. If God said, uh, a drunkard shall not inherit the kingdom of heaven, don't tell me you can go home and just drink a couple of beers and uh, I, I'm not going out. I'm just going to drink me a couple of beers. I'm not going to be drunk. I'm gonna drink. What are you drinking a couple of beers for? Don't taste good. 
So what are you drinking for? Because you know it changes your mental euphoria. Yep. It makes you high. Is there any difference between getting high on uh, Budweiser or Miller Lite and cocaine? No. What's the difference? No. There's no difference. Amen. You're changing your mental euphoria. Amen. So a drunkard, the Bible makes mention, shall not inherit the kingdom of heaven. Drunkard does not mean staggering. Amen. Drunkard means any time you do something artificially to create an artificial stimulus, you are drunk. Yeah. Amen. 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 That's what artificial stimulus are for. Amen. Praise God. God said, I'll give you a, 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 a spirit where you can praise me and worship me Praise God, and you ain't gonna have no hangover. Amen. Hallelujah. And guess what? It's free. Amen. And you ain't got to go to the fridge. Amen. You ain't got to go to no bar. All you got to do is start getting happy. Amen. In your car, Amen. on your job, Amen. on your lunch break, or when you come to church, or when you feel depressed, start getting happy in the spirit. Amen. And watch something take hold of you. Yeah. Watch something control you. Amen. I'm talking about the spirit of God. That he promised he would give you. He said, I'll go away. Because I got to, my personality got to go back to glory. Been here too long, I have to go yes. back. Hallelujah. But I'm going to leave you a comforter. Yes, Lord. Thank you, which is the spirit of Christ. Amen. I'm in Romans 6 chapter. I'll yes, uh, jump right in at Romans 8 and verse 9. Amen. Hold your place. We're going to back up again to the 6th chapter. I'm going to show you something. Y'all pay close attention. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. It's when you get saved, you're water baptized in Jesus' name. You are not in the flesh. Now watch folks. I, I, I still got my earthly body. But what Paul is saying, you don't follow the flesh. Amen. You're in the flesh, but you're not of the flesh. You're of the spirit now, because the spirit of God indwells in you. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. If the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Now here, did y'all catch that? Yeah. Spirit of Christ and Spirit of God. He uses it again interchangeably to let you know the Holy Ghost is nothing but the Spirit of God. Amen. Or the Spirit of Christ. And not a separate person. You can't pour out a person Amen. on nobody. But the Bible says he'll pour out his Spirit upon all flesh. All flesh. Now again, the Holy Ghost guides us, it leads us, it, it, it gives us the inference we need to live a holy life. But it will not make you live a holy life. Amen. But you have to be willing to make the sacrifice to live that life that is acceptable in the sight of God. Present your body as a living sacrifice. Amen. Present your body as a living sacrifice. Living sacrifice, yes. Yes. holy, yes. follow peace and all with all men and holiness without which no man shall no see man. the Lord. Now we're going back again, back up to chapter 6, jump right into verse uh, 3. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? I told you a few weeks ago, when you get water baptized, you kill, symbolically, the old you or the fleshly you. Amen. Uh -huh. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism yes. into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father. you go down in Jesus' name, and then you come up. Amen. That Adamic sin that you were birthed into is gone. Yes. Amen. Now what does it say? Even, therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that, yes. is, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. We should walk. In the newness of life. Amen. In other words, we should live according to the new life or the new birth. Now, it doesn't didn't say that uh, uh, he's going to make you. Amen. It said that's what you're supposed to do. Uh -huh. now, now, let's go to uh, verse 12 in 6th chapter Romans. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in the lust thereof. Now, it's talking about good and evil. Amen. It's talking about a rule. It's talking about a foundation. Don't let sin rule in your body or yes. reign in your body that you should obey it. Yes. 
Now sin is going to be there, but you're not supposed to obey it. Right. Why? Because now you've got the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost will guide you. All you have to do is have the self-discipline in yourself not to follow the lust of sin. Amen. It's up to the individual. Again, read. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin. Now there's no way you can misunderstand uh, what Paul is teaching the church. There is no way that you can say, well, uh, yeah, but uh, I'm still saved. I, I, I sin. I still drink liquor. I still uh, fornicate, but I'm still saved. I'm still a sissy, and I'm still saved. I'm still a lesbian, and I'm still saved. No, you're not saved. Amen. Because you have sinned before God. You have sinned against the Holy Scriptures, which means you sin against God. Now watch verse 17. But God be thanked that you were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that former doctrine which The doctrine, again, which has the foundation, which establishes the rule, you have obeyed. Now, why did he say you have obeyed? Amen. If you haven't obeyed, you're not saved. So I have obeyed. Now, read that again. I used to be. Uh -huh. But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin. I used to be a sinner. Yes. But ye have obeyed from the heart that former doctrine which was delivered you. The foundation of God stand ashore, having this seal. Yes. The Lord yes. knoweth them that are his. And that everyone that nameth the name of Christ do something. Lord. Depart. Or leave a sinful life alone. Yeah. Now, why is he giving this instruction? Because he's trying to make a separation and a distinction in the separation between a true church and a false church. Yeah. Hallelujah. You've got to understand, church, that all of these teachers that you see over YouTube and all these so-called preachers, they nothing but a bunch of hypocrites. That's, right, That's after yeah. money, yeah. after a good lifestyle, yeah. and don't care too shit about your soul because they don't care about their own soul. Yeah. Hear me. They do not no more believe in the Bible Teach, than a Muslim believes in the Bible. Yes. Right. I'm going to say the devil because the devil believes in the Bible. Amen. The Bible says he believes in God and trembles. Right. So I'm saying, when you have preachers teaching all this foolishness that they're teaching, uh, not uh, telling uh, the uh, sodomites and lesbians, come on in. God loves you anyhow. That's a lie. Amen. Lord. God ain't gonna send nobody to lick a fire that he loves. Yes. Amen. And God hates sin. Yes. Yes. And you cannot take the word sin and try to make sin a person. Amen. Sin dwells in a person. That's right, prophet. How do you can't rob a bank and, and say, the devil made me do it, and the judge put the devil in jail? He can't put sin in jail. He put you in jail for sin. Sin no not go to the lake of fire. The person who commits a sin goes to the lake of fire. Let's get this thing right. You're a preacher who God has sent. Not these devils. Amen. In the Bible, That's right. and Jesus on the lip, yeah. but the devil in their heart. That's right. Praise Lord. God. Amen. We have to know the difference, and there is a difference. Paul explained it very clearly that there is a difference. Once you have heard the word, you got to do something about the word that you heard. Amen. Bible says he what used to be a sinner. Uh -huh. Read that again. God be thanked that you were the servants of sin, yes. so you have obeyed from the heart that former doctrine which was delivered. Doctrine. The doctrine that saves you. Not repeating that to somebody. On, it's the doctrine yes. that saves you. Uh -huh. Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. Now, let's get Galatians first chapter. Amen. Jump right into verse 6. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. To another doctrine. Which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. Yes. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be a curse. Let him be a curse. If somebody tells you something different, yeah. he's a curse. That's right. I said before, God ain't never had but one church. And he never had but one prophet to rightly interpret the word of truth. Amen. So that there be no divisions amongst you. Uh, I, I'm sorry about the incident that happened at the school. Amen. Amen. 
Shoot me out here. That's right, brother. Amen. But they say they're having an interfaith fellowship yes. for the bereaved families. Yes. Find interfaith in the Bible. That's right, brother. Come on. Bring it out. Find anywhere in the Bible where God said, all churches, let's come together and get along. The Bible said he got one church, yes. one Lord, and one faith. One faith means one church or one denomination, if you will. Amen. He never had this division in the churches. Yes. Because when he come back, he ain't coming back for churches. Amen. He's coming back for one church. Lord. Hallelujah. Without spot or wrinkle. This is why I teach you so, uh, uh, so explicitly concerning live a life that's for real. You, you, you don't don't play church. Be for real. Amen. If you're weak, the word of God will get you strong. Amen. All you gotta do is have the perseverance and the self-discipline to stay under correct teaching Amen. and not get weak and say, Oh, I, I, I don't believe in all that. I'll go down the street to the Baptist church. Yes. Well, you can do that, and God ain't gonna stop you. Uh -huh. But when you stand before the judgment throne, I mean, what you gonna say about your soul? That you all speak the same thing, that there be no divisions amongst you. Let's close in uh, uh, 22nd chapter. Revelation. Yes. Yeah. Jump in at verse 12. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me. Now that word quickly means shortly or truly. Uh huh. And my reward is with me. My reward is with me. To give every man according as his work shall every be. Every man and woman according to what? As his work shall be. Yes, Lord. What I thought that Paul wrote is not by works, but by grace. Are you saved? Is that Bible? It sure is. But what did God say? I come back and my reward is with me, or my judgment is with me, to give each man or woman according as their works or their lifestyle shall be. Another passage, I believe, over one of the Corinthians letters, it said, whether it be good or whether it be bad. Amen. Again, you're going back to the principles of good and evil. So I'm saying, church, you have to understand that division of the word of truth, or you can get lost in all the complexity that these hypocrite preachers are trying to preach, and they have no calling on their life. He said, Behold, I come quickly, my rewards with me to each man according to as his work shall be. Read. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Watch those. Blessed are they that do his commandments, now, blessed are those who do or keep his rule. Amen. Is that right? Commandments is set up in the rule. Amen. Read. That they may have right to the tree of life. Now, blessed are those who keep the commandment or keep the rule so that they might have a right to eternal life. Uh -huh. And may enter in through the gates into the city. You're going to the gates of the city, talking to heavenly gates. Uh -huh. For without are dogs and sorcerers. Dogs, and dogs, sodomites, sodomites, rather. That's right. The word he, he said it from the, the, the rise of the prophet Moses. Amen. In the holy temple there shall be no uh, prostitute. That's right. Or no sodomite. Amen. Or he, he used the equivalent of a dog. In the house of God, you're not to have any type of, any, again, you're not talking about a four-legged animal. Amen. Amen. So Jesus is simply taking that reference point and he's using it in a ne very negative context. So I've told people who email me all the time, I say, Jesus calls Sodom mighty dogs. Amen. Lord. And you get mad because I call them sissies. Amen. See you, Father. No. Amen. Amen. For without our dogs and sorcerers, without our dogs, sorcerers, and whoremongers, and murderers, and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. Oh, that's deep there. Wait a minute. Amen. Whoever loveth and maketh a lie. So if you, if I'm telling you a lie, and, and, and you love it, give me those of y'all in them false churches. Amen. You know that preacher lied to you. That's right. But you love it. Read. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. Without. For without are dogs and sorcerers and whores. Without what? 
without side the church, Amen. without the truth, Amen. without Amen. the instructions that lead you in the path of righteousness, without uh, any specified dogs, whoremongers, uh, uh, sodomites, and, yes. and liars, and those who love the lie. Amen. All of this is outside the household of faith. Why would you let a preacher tell you that it don't take all that? Amen. Why would you let a preacher tell you because you confess Jesus and you're a liar, you, you're going to heaven? Why would you believe that you could uh, shack up? There's a sister called me in Detroit once. I was on the radio. Mm. And she said, well, you know, uh, I sure enjoy your, your, your teaching. And I've been trying to get my boyfriend, I've been trying to get him to listen to you. I said, boyfriend? She said, oh, yes, yes, but he, he I'm saved, but he's not. I said, what? I said, you, you living together? She said, yes, we living together. We're going to get married as soon as such and such happen. And we, we plan on getting married. I said, well, first of all, you need to get saved. Amen. Well, I'm saved. I'm already saved. I said, no, you're not saved. Well, my pastor told me I'm saved. And I believe with my pastor. But I'm telling you that you're not saved. Amen. Anytime you're shacking up with a man, live with a man, and you're not legally married or lawfully married to him, according to the word of God, you're not saved. Amen. Right, I don't care what your pastor told you. Amen. Your pastor is a liar. That's Just like right. God said in Revelation 22. And those who love a lie, so you love a lie. Yes. You yes. just as bad as your pastor. Yes. And I got no more respect for your boyfriend because he don't want to hear the word. You listen to the word and still don't know how to receive the word. Right. You worship right. here. And your pastor was an awesome both of you. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 I just had to share that. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Get me uh, Romans, the seventh chapter. Yeah. Let me see if I can extract this quickly. Uh, verse 16. Uh, yeah. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. What? Now then, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Uh -huh. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing, for to will is Amen. present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. Now what Paul is speaking about a person before he's converted. Yes. We just read you the 6th chapter of the book of Romans. Now let's connect this with the 8th chapter of the book of Romans, Amen. right from verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation. Now these devil preachers tell you Paul said he couldn't live right. So therefore you can't live right. Paul he never said that. Amen. He's given an illustration and because you do not know how to rightly divide the Come word on, of truth, you misinterpret what he's saying. I opened up and told you Paul is a complex teacher. Amen. And if you ain't careful, man, you, you beat the devil to the lake of fire. Amen. If you try to follow Paul without rightly dividing what he's trying to teach. All right, now, uh, read. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Who I've heard preachers say, therefore, now there's no condemnation, and they stop right there. That's right. But it didn't say that. It's, you got to finish it. That's right. Read. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Who don't sin, Amen. like the flesh tell you. But the spirit, the Holy Ghost, that leads you in the truth. Yes. Amen. You got to finish it. You can't just read, there's no condemnation and stop right there. Yes. Which means I can keep on sinning and I can't be condemned. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Glory. Foolish Galatians. That's right. Who have you with you? Amen. Uh, let's finish it. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus have made me free from the law of sin and death. Yes. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. Now, Jesus died to condemn sin. Amen. But once you've been converted, you no longer a sinner. Lord. If you don't continue a life of sin. Amen. Let's, let, let's read. Uh, seven, uh, verse 7. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. Now the flesh you use in your God. For it is not subject to the law of God. It, it can't obey the instructions of God. Uh -huh. Neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Them that are in the flesh can't please God. Uh -huh. But ye are not in the flesh. But, but you ain't in the flesh. Amen. Yes, Lord. Lord. And you get born again. Amen. You're not in the flesh. 
You got to understand what Paul is saying. He's talking about before you converted, after you converted, after you converted, you are no longer in the flesh, therefore you're no longer a sinner. Now you converted, you follow the righteousness of God because now you're walking by the Spirit. Amen. And the Spirit man, if he's led, does not sin or follow the sinful or worldly way. Amen. How many love the word of the Lord tonight? Yeah. I thank God amen, for this teaching. Oh, I thank God a lot of clarity, and especially those uh, I hear my way of you too. Okay. I said before, I am God's last messenger teaching you the truth. Okay. And if you find someone who's teaching like me, examine his record, yeah. examine his tapes or his videos, and examine the context and the continuity of his church. Amen. Yeah. Right, right. We're the only church that I know of that wears a veil covering. Amen. Amen. Sisters dress appropriately. Yes. Yeah. And the brothers dress in modesty. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. And we follow the word of God without taking a little here right. and, and wrongly dividing this and trying to add on over here. We follow the word of God. And the word of God can be followed. You can live a holy life if you purpose in your heart to live a holy life. It's the same context of uh, desire within the individual that can cause you to sin or that cause you not to sin. Amen. It's the choice that we make. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory. God said, if you obey him, he'll give you the tree of life. Amen. And I thank God we have made up our mind we're going to obey the word of truth. Amen. 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 He's a wonderful Savior. He's so wonderful. He's a wonderful Savior. comes up. Uh, now, this was the third Sunday. Mm -hmm. Amen. And uh, I have this here. I left the other package at home. I, I intend to bring it back tonight because I like to do this for a reason. Uh, daughter Diamond and Brother Moo, $425. Yeah. Elder Brooks, five hundred dollars. Daughter Panera gave an envelope three. What was that, daughter? Three hundred and twenty dollars. She ain't been working about a month, so she take her money. She ain't trying to buy no uh, expensive wardrobe. She's trying to see how much she can get to the kingdom. Yes. Yes. I know what I'm doing. Yes. 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 Elder Richie. What was that, Elder? You give me this one? $400. Yes. And I got someone give me a couple of them tonight. <laughs> CJ. A dollar and 25 cents. Bought some candy with it. Amen. Amen. Evangelist Galantine, Elder Galantine, kind of heavy. Seven hundred dollars. Those of you who have not, uh, yes, Elder Kevin, you can hardly wait to get up here. Amen. Praise God. One hundred thirty dollars. Now this is the third Sunday, so those of you who did not participate, oh wait a minute, I think somebody did somebody else give me. I get you. Uh, yeah, Elder, Elder Lansing gave me an envelope. I 
No, he gave it to me. I better find it. Evangelist Marshall, Elder Marshall, two hundred dollars. Amen. I know he ought to give me an envelope. I'm gonna find it. It's tonight, wasn't it? Yes, sir. Well, how much was it, Elder? Two hundred and sixty dollars. Two hundred and sixty dollars, me out of that. We can't find it, but it ain't it ain't gone far. Yeah. All we got to do is hunt it down. Yeah. <laughs> Lord, and we will hunt it down. Yeah. Now, also, uh, now the Christmas tracks are at the back well, at the console where Elder Willis is. And uh, are they all stamped? All of them are, are stamped with the web, church web, and the uh, YouTube address is on there. I'd like for everybody to take 10 tracks. And uh, if the weather permits tomorrow, uh, pick your place to pass out those 10 tracks. I think it's a very good track. Amen. Uh, so, again, we're going to judge ourselves accordingly, but now we're going to have Elder Brooks come up with our final words. Amen. 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 Two, 
Now another one gonna be even happier. Hey, so, hey, great prophet, you know. You got a great prophet. Yeah. 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 I give honor to God who saved my life. I give also honor to our bishop, Prophet and uh, Mother Elect Walker, and everybody in the house of faith. Hallelujah. Um, you know, each and every day when uh, men of God stand here and share the word of God, no matter how many times like you know you repeat the same scripture or even reading it to us some of us maybe we have heard him more than enough but every time you know when he stands here and share the word i get new revelations every day Amen. when he comes here you know i've been talking with my wife that we have been in the first you know churches and try to preach even the message to people that also maybe we have led them even astray because uh, for, uh, from the time that i came here it's my personal testimony the way how i knew bible and the way how okay i used to know bible and the way how now i understand the bible today is two different things two different ways i thank god to be under you know a noted man of god prophet h walker Maybe people like in Africa, they admire maybe him even to be under him and maybe hear him live. But myself to make it, you know, ourselves to come here and see him live and teaching us. Hallelujah. We are so much privileged by God. Yeah. And we don't take this opportunity or, you know, this chance for granted. Each and every day we are praying that God make us, equip us with what you can see the whole month. You know, the teaching that has been not teaching. When he speaks, and maybe we, we get it differently, but I want to express how I feel myself when he teaches. Yeah. You feel, you know, yeah. certain things, you know, being uprooted from you. Yes. When he speaks the word, if there was some, maybe like a, maybe a wrong spirit, mm -hmm. or maybe it, uh, uh, I don't know how to put it, but you could you feel the wrong things you know being uprooted and being implanted you know with good new things Amen. about christmas and tammuz we have been preaching about christmas and tammuz if we were in africa by today maybe we could be planning with my wife oh we don't have money we we're supposed to do this oh we're supposed to do this but all those things were of you no know, pagan's background we didn't know about that but advantage of being this in this church being under the man of god I want to tell you, we have gained more than enough. Amen. We are gaining each and every day. Each and every day, we are growing in our faith. Amen. You know, I, I, one time I texted, you know, I, 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 I emailed Bishop. Seeing certain, you know, preacher on TV, uh, I can even mention him, it's uh, Joseph Prince. He, this man is from Singapore. He said he has been, he has a very big church here in America. But he said he's gifted teaching about grace. But the grace, how he teaches even that grace, is beyond and it's exaggerated. He allows, you know, homosexual, you know, him, uh, 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 race beings to be in the church, said no, where sin, you know, is bound, it means the grace will superbound everything. So I've been telling my life, this man is the first man, he's not even man of God, he's a first prophet. A lot of people that are still, you know, they are still following him, but he, he, he said, you know, we, we don't have, you know, supernatural bodies, so we cannot, what, what, but according to what, uh, you know, prophet tells us, we have good eyes to say this is evil and we cannot even be associated with evil. We are able to say no to sin. We are able to, you, you know, to guard ourselves with, you know, heavenly righteousness. We are, you know, able to say, no, we don't even eat these things. We don't even participate in, 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 in these things. I feel good. 
I feel joy. I feel power each and every day. Because we are in the true church of God. Hallelujah. May God literally bless our prophet. Keep, let's keep on your uh, praying for him so that we can benefit and get everything that he has. Our prayer at home said, Father, we, we, we pray with my wife. When the prophet comes, give him a way that also will make us grow. If you check my Bible, it's full of notes. Because I cannot only keep in my mind, but also I should at least write down. So that when I'm at some way, I will be able to read and see, uh, uh, you know, and remind myself about the righteousness of God. Hallelujah. Blog Talk Radio.